Good morning. In today's gospel, the Samaritan woman asks Jesus for water, an image of thirst for God. Jesus offers living water, a sign of God's grace flowing from the waters of baptism. The early church used this gospel and those for the next two Sundays to deepen the baptismal reflection during the final days of preparation before the baptism of, at Easter. We have this journey to resurrection feast. Christ comes among us in word, bath, and meal, offering us the life-giving water of God's mercy and forgiveness. And those who want to please stand for the opening hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. The psalm for today is Psalm 95. We will read it responsively. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout out for the joy of the rock of our salvation. Let, let us come, come before, before God's, God's presence, presence with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The height of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord, our God, and we are His God, God's people, and God's from pasture, the sheep of God's hand. Oh, today that you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts as merriment, but on the day Messiah the desert. Oops. There your ancestors tested me, for they put me through the test. They had seen my many works. Forty years I loathed a generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore... In my anger, they shall never come to my rest. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings, 
Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also, also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Exodus 17, 1 through 7. Because the thirsty Israelites quarreled with Moses and put God to the test, Moses cried out in desperation to God. God commanded Moses to strike the rock to provide water for the people. The doubt-filled question, is the Lord among us or not, received a very positive answer. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephindim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord, the word of life. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows from the beauty with your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The second reading is from Romans 5, 1 through 11. Though we often hear that God helps those who help themselves, here Paul tells us that through Jesus' death, God helps utterly helpless sinners. Since we who have been enemies are reconciled to God in the cross, we now live in hope for our final salvation. Since you are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good person some might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even <coughs> boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes to us from John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. This is 37 verses, so if anybody wants to sit down, I don't have a problem with this. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samarians. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give him the water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, 
give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming back here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or where are you why are you speaking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, and she said to the people, come and see the man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more than comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Praise to you, O Christ. There's a lot of stuff in there. That is a lot of teaching. And as I was explaining to Rich and Claudia, I've been supposed to preach a couple times recently and we've been snowed in. And I don't know about you guys, but the idea of water is no longer as appealing as it once was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we had the snow, uh, I live in Miwok, for those who don't know, and many of you live a little further down the hill, but um, Sandy and Mike understand because they're in Twain Heart, but anyway, um, <coughs> Peter was trying to toss snow from in front of our car onto a pile that had reached the top of his head, 
you know, the, this kind of thing. We have a snowplow guy. I, I can't do that in church. But I declare to goodness that the pile he made was 10 foot high. You know, just really a lot. And so yesterday, well, we got the car down to the paint three times. And I got to the post office the first time and gave up and came home. Well, I got to the post office. That was good. Uh, the second time I got all the way to Sonora and got groceries, came home and took a nap for about two hours because driving was stressful. And yesterday, I decided that I was going to go see a movie. I mean, yeah, give me a break. So in the middle of the movie, the tornado warning comes on and 10 phones in the movie theater go, go racket. Well, anyway, water. I was thinking about this gospel, and um, it occurs to me that it would make fabulous screenplay. It, it could be a whole evening of play. You know, we, we could learn a lot from that. And um, there's a lot to be said about so much of it, but I kind of thought I might give you a little bit of my take on what was going, because I am fond of taking large stories. I don't like the tiny little verses that come out of context. I really like the large stories. And the first thing, and, and also the, I don't know how many of you remember, but Pastor Debbie a few years back did a play about this woman and about why it would be Thanks, a few people remember it. Um, and why it would be that she might have been in the situation that she was, we were trying to detract from the idea of her necessarily being a sinner, but that circumstances had led her to have to have five different husbands and so forth and so on. But the fact remains that the woman at the well and in the Orthodox Church, she's known as a saint called Photini, which has to do with bringer of light. But I won't do Orthodox theology for you because this is a Lutheran church and I never learned it properly anyway. Um, it, she was probably the most outcast of an already outcast society from the Jews' point of view. And yet, our Lord opened a conversation with her. Maybe he really was thirsty, but I think he sensed that this was a person who needed, so he asked her for a drink of water because that was kind of like an appropriate opening that she wouldn't immediately run away from. But she was pretty surprised. And then they have this whole conversation where she says, how come you're talking to me? I'm a Samaritan woman and, you know, whatever, whatever. By the way, he'd already sent the disciples in for, for McDonald's. It, it actually says a little earlier that they'd been sent in to gather food for lunch, or maybe not lunch, but whatever meal, okay? It, that's a little earlier in the story. But so they were, they were off, you know, deciding between Arby's and Wendy's and whatever they were doing, and, and he's talking to her about water. And he says, well, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for water, which I think a lot of us did. <laughs> Didn't we want the drought to end? Yeah. And Tuolumne and Calaveras now are out of drought. Thanks be to God. Okay, thanks be to God. But he says, the water that I give will become, in everyone who drinks of it, a spring gushing up to eternal life. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to start seeing green, and it'll be spring, and we'll forget all this misery, and we'll go, wow, 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 here comes summer, I hope. But there is a summer of our heart, a spring in our heart, that he promises that if we drink of his water, we will receive that. 
okay. So at that point, she's kind of interested. And she says, tell me more about this. And he says, go get your husbands. And they do all that stuff. The thing that struck me is that she recognizes him as a prophet. And because she recognizes him as a prophet, and remember, she hasn't had a whole lot of people to talk to. She, people weren't, you know, she didn't have a whole lot of friends to converse with. Nobody was really going to pay attention to this woman who's not quite living the way you should. But she's got something on her mind. And she wants to know about, hey, you know, we've been worshiping on this mountain, and you guys worship in Jerusalem, and What's the story here? Because she sees him as a prophet who can answer questions. And he gives her an answer. The hour is now here. By the way, I copied this out of my um, NSV, so if it's not quite the same as in this one, I apologize. It says, the hour is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And the part I left out was the part about how mountain, Jerusalem doesn't make any difference. This is, this is the story here, in spirit and in truth. But in case you missed it, right after that, Jesus reveals himself to her in no uncertain terms as the Christ that she knew was coming. He tells her that. Verse 24 to 26. I wrote it down over here. He was kind of letting a lot of people figure that out for themselves, but he tells her directly. And at this point, the disciples are coming back with their McDonald's, and she leaves, which makes sense to me. If I saw 12 or more men coming up, I'd probably leave too, just let them do their thing. I got my own thing to do, and she runs off, and she starts talking to the townsfolk about this guy. And some of them were so moved by what she had to tell them that they believed right away. But in any case, a bunch of them decided that they were going to go check out this guy for him themselves. Not because they didn't believe her, but because what she was saying moved them so much. And so... <clears throat> Meanwhile, the disciples are busy trying to get Jesus to eat something, and he goes off and he says, you know, food. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. So, yes, we focus on water this week, but this, this whole gospel is about water and food. So the water is springing up inside, bringing us to an eternal life. And we learn that the food is to do the will of his father. And there's the whole, well, you know, yeah, my grandparents came off the farm, and I think all of us probably have forebears somewhere that were farmers because we weren't in the industrial age forever. And, you know, public education wasn't available to our families for many generations, so probably everybody ran a plow. My grandfather was so bad at it that the town elected him to the school board so that his labor would be put to use and not be messing up the fields he was supposed to be plowing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and look what happened. We got three generations of teachers in my family as a result. You know? Hi, Claudia. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, but my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Wow. And they get a whole story about reaping and sowing because they're farmers. They, they, they understand farming. And that's the work that they're talking about. All of us can take that 
as the work that we understand and, and know that to do God's will within whatever else we're doing is important. Well, you know, who, what's this reaping all about? Here come the Samaritans. Here come the Samaritans, all excited. They want to see this Jesus. They want to find out more about what this woman was telling them. And they were so excited, they said, hang out with us. And he stayed two days, which is a long time. You can learn a lot in two days if somebody's being wise at you. Don't you think? And uh, I don't really have a good ending to this. So two weeks ago, I was supposed to um, be the person in charge on the first Sunday in Lent. And I thought I might tell you a little story. I'll see if I can make it dramatic enough. Um, once upon a time, I was a graduate student in math, and my advisor gave an international conference hosted at my university of mathematicians from all over the world. And the grad students were slaves. We drove those guys wherever they needed to be driven. I was in charge of making sure the coffee pot never ran dry, made sure the food was out, when, whatever. None of the grad students went to any of the mathematical events. We were busy. A friend of mine had to take some Hungarian guy, wonderful man, to the bank to make sure he could get some cash. That, that was the kind of thing we were doing, okay? I didn't happen to have a car available. Two others of my friends had been instructed, take pictures of everything. So they were running around taking pictures because you want to remember the cover, right? Okay, so we did this for three days. And at the end of the last day, there was a banquet. And my advisor bought dinner for the 12 of us that had been running around like slaves. That's the kind of guy he was. So we get to dinner, and this was happening at the end of fall semester, which means we were in the early part of December. And I'm sitting in between, by the way, the grad students came from all over the world. We had Chinese, Brazilians, Eastern Europeans, and a few Americans. But whenever we got in a restaurant situation, the Americans would interpret the names of the food for the people who had no idea what it was. And we would say things like beef, chicken, eggplant, you know, because whatever their culinary names in the menu, these guys hadn't had that vocabulary. So anyway, um, I was sitting in between a Romanian and a Spaniard, a devout Orthodox and a devout Catholic, okay? Emily at the time was a pretty devout Episcopalian, and you know, Episcopalians, the way I was brought up anyway, kind of recognize everybody, you know, so it was cool. I could be the interface. And the guys were friends anyway. So anyway, the Romanian's there. He's ordered some salmon or something or other, and he looks at this little bowl of clarified butter, and he says, Emily, what's that? I said, I think it's melted butter. Do you want me to check it for you? And he nods, so I pick up one of my million spoons, you know, they give you a lot of silverware, stick it in there, taste it's butter, and I noticed he never touched it, did not touch it. So at the end of the banquet, when we're all finding our coats and figuring out who's going to take which dignitary to which hotel or the airport or wherever, I said to Bogdan, my friend, did you avoid the butter because it's Advent? And he looked at me with absolute astonishment and said, yes. Now, the Orthodox don't call it Advent. It's one of the Lents. There are four of them. I learned all this late. Hi, Rich. <laughs> there are four of them. And the period before Christmas is just as holy as the period before Easter. And the true Orthodox who are into this 
fast from, it's a vegan fast. There's, there's no dairy, there's no meat, it's, it's, and they do it, it. Actually, if you add up all the fasting days in an Orthodox calendar, it's more than half the year. Okay, it's, it's intense. All right, so anyway, um, let's just say that, I don't know what this has to do with anything to do with the gospel, but this was my beginning of Lent story, was basically that because of this, and the Episcopalians remember in the distant past they used to do these fasts. They didn't do them anymore, but I'd heard about... So anyway, as a result of this, I became very good friends with this Romanian young man who has subsequently finished his PhD in math, taught at an Irish university for a while, got sick of that, went to work for the Archdiocese of the Orthodox Church in Western Europe, and is now a deacon and a father of three kids. Okay, so time goes on. And here I am, because, well, partly because I realize that we worship in spirit and truth, and it doesn't really matter whether we follow all these rules and regulations if we keep our eye on the source of the living water. Thank you. Um, the hymn of the day, if anybody's tired of sitting, you can stand up, but it's not mandatory. The hymn of the day is Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. It's number 334 if you want to read the music, or we got it up here, I guess. Okay. Gentlemen, take it away. Please stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, on Jesus fight and died, and buried. He sent into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for your church, bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue. Guide us in the daily de work of de denominational and congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel, that all the experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for the universe and all of creation teems with life from the depths of the seas and the, and the depths of the earth to the skies above us. Fill us with awe, reverence, and reverence for the diversity and the preservation of life. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for the nations around the world Top of the, dwell, the dividing walls that separate us from our, neighbor, our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or in sickness. Make your living water their water always. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for this congregation. Nurture their faith, pour their love, your love into their hearts. Inspire our, our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, here, other prayers may be said either in your hearts or out loud. Lord, we lift up to you Jim Fairfax, Elizabeth Jones, as she passed away last night. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We ask you to be with Pastor Peter Bernard, Jan Cortez, Sina, Lori Murphy. Receive our prayer. We give thanks for all the lives of all your saints, their hope in you sustain lives of faith and service. Encourage with us with hope they shared in you. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love, your promise to renew your whole creation through Christ our Savior. Amen. Now we get to pass the peace. Pass the peace in whichever way makes you comfortable and try to limit it a little bit, but we don't have enough people to try to limit it enough today. So. We now give to God what is first given to us. Now we will sing the doxology.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join me in the offertory prayer. God of good gifts, receive this and all of our offerings. We present in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our heart to receive you in this meal and pour out the presence of Jesus Christ, our Lord, us being of our eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give. give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promises of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receive the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. <clears throat> to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory to your holy church now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness, as we sing Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Christ's body broken for you. Christ's blood shed for you. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Embody God at your table. We have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With your eyes, open our hearts to your promise. Empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Okay, the presiding bishop of oh, bishop, sorry, the presiding leader will be on, on next week will be Pastor Bob. Easter's coming. We will need cut flowers for the cross or lilies 
of our flowering plants for the altar area. Um, hopefully we'll have some cut flowers. Easter comes early this year. Um, we will not be having Holy Week services this year. Easter service will begin at 11 at... Is that um, Satan? These are, this is two different sentences. Oh, okay. Okay. We will not be having Holy Week services this Easter. Easter Sunday service will be at 11 o'clock. Oh, St. Matthew's in Sonora will be having a Monday, Thursday uh, service, April 6th, and a Good Friday service on April 7th at 5.30. March, very important. March, noisy offering, toiletries. Items for ADCA. See Sandy or Carol and the newsletter. Oh, no, I have another announcement. See Sandy or Carol about that. Uh, these are important. Uh, they'll, they'll package them up, up in little packages to be handed out to people as, as, as they're needed. Okay, the newsletter has kind of an error in it. The dates of the newsletter are incorrect, so forget about the dates as listed. Palm Sunday will be on April 2nd, and Easter is on April 9th, so you understand my statement about the flowers. Hopefully we'll have a bunch. Um, we'd like to thank everybody who participate today uh, we everybody's listed and we always give thanks for all these people that pro do all the things making us ever able to have a service Emily you are you doing the blessing no. <clears throat> may God the giver of love Christ the resurrection and the life and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, rebirth bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn will be Holy Spirit ever dwelling. 